Hello, welcome to Matters of Decorum. I am Scott Corum. This is what matters to me. New camera angle, the office is in flux. Uh, things are different here and about. I've actually had to build some things to make things work correctly. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about how it's lining up. Work in progress. I grew up in an amazing time for filling my head with heroes and villains and stories and popular culture. I was born in 1968. Uh, the 70s was my playground and the 80s was my training field. I was able to fuel my imagination with some of the most amazing literature to ever cross a flickering Zenith 28 inch television screen. Um, by the time I could read, I already had a background in early Japanese animation long before there was anything called anime. Um, Star Trek and uh, the detective shows of the early 70s, uh, that was all just dumped into my head. Um, the, the, the toys that I had to work with. I grew up in an era, I went, I was able to go from uh, Mego 8 inch action figures to Microman, or Microman, Microman, the, uh, the, the Japanese toy series that became Micronauts in the 80s. Um, G.I. Joe, from 12 inches down to three and a half, three and a quarter, and the Star Wars figures, all of this stuff, um, I was raised uh, to believe that, to this day, I still live parts of my life by lessons I learned by watching Speed Racer. <sighs> Get Smart, Hogan's Heroes, F Troop, uh, the, a lot of the syndicated shows of the time that were just... They were funny, so a child could watch them <clears throat> and absorb concepts from them, but at the same time, it was spies, and it was soldiers, and it was espionage, and, and there was action. Um, most of my introduction to action movie tropes or spy tropes did not come from the James Bond films, but came from Get Smart. So by the time I caught up and started watching the James Bond films, the things that happened to them seemed very natural to me because, well, Maxwell Smart did that, but he was funnier. This conglomeration of information and action and heroes and story um, formed a foundation I can still pick bits and pieces out of today. I run games based roughly on scenarios from the Little Rascals or the Three Stooges or Laurel and Hardy, Scooby-Doo, all of this stuff, incidentally, one continuous stream of consciousness across a flickering screen in front of me during most of my childhood. Um, I had plenty of non-television playtime. Uh, but my non-television playtime was fueled by my television time. I would have creative toys for the most part. Blocks, tinker toys, Play-Doh, things that I could shape with my hands and my mind and my imagination. And to fuel that, I had, you know, I had Hot Wheels and Matchbox and lots of little cars and vehicles and figures. And playtime was kinetic. It was kinetic in my hands, it was kinetic up here, and then I would go and I would fill the tank up again. Saturday mornings in the 70s and 80s and even the 90s were um, these wonderlands where new information came in. I could watch Scooby-Doo and for a while it was new until the syndication started to loop. Bugs Bunny cartoons and whatnot, all of this stuff was a constant stream, but then Saturday morning, new stuff poured in for a while. And 
The Worlds of City Marty Croft and Hanna-Barbera, Space Ghost and the Herculoids and Waldo Kitty and the Super Friends. Oh my God, the Super Friends. Even though the writing on many of these was terrible. The characters had me coming back. The settings and the people involved in them, the designs and the aesthetics, all grabbed my young mind and dumped straight in. If someone offered me the chance to play Space Ghost in a role-playing game, I would be there in a second. I have built variations on that character uh, in Champions and GURPS and a couple of others. Uh, all of this poured in and made one congealed mass. The toys that I had, like I said, Microman and the Micronauts when it turned to that, G.I. Joe, various scales. I had toys that people have completely forgotten about. My Pinterest page, I may put a link down below, uh, is full of the nostalgic toys that I had in my hands as a child. The Big Jim series, uh, JJ Arms, an action figure notable only for the fact that his hands came off and you could replace them with other things, uh, including mechanical hooks and guns and swords. Um, uh, the original Max Steel, which was a terrible action figure because if you lost one part, you couldn't play with the whole thing anymore. And I lost one part and I couldn't play with the whole thing anymore. Action figures went through these amazing changes as I was growing up and I had toys from every iteration of these changes. Star Wars came out, my po folks got me the entire first run of Star Wars figures for one birthday, including the Land Speeder, the TIE Fighter, and the X-Wing. I got the Death Star playset when it first came out for the Kenner action figures, and I have never played with a single thing any more than I play with that damn thing. That was amazing. This whole area that had things that were from the movie, but that I could run my own play and adventures in. It is this influx of fuel for the imagination that is the reason I am a gamer today. But it's also a reason that I am the particular brand of gamer that I am. I don't respect a boundary between genre. I can be playing Dungeons and Dragons, but if I find a laser gun, I'm using the hell out of it in the dungeon. Uh, I will throw robots into my dungeons. I will have a bunch of fighters, wizards, and thieves storm a spaceship because that's cool to me. Because in my head, with this constant stream of things, the my, my afternoons in the 80s were... Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos and the Smurf and Rambo and 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 My Little Pony and GI Joe and and robotics in this never-ending stream and there were no boundaries. Sometimes Chuck Norris and Rambo used the exact same scripts once on the exact same day. And all of this just it's like if you take your favorite foods and pounded them together into one mash, you wouldn't think that you'd like it, but you'd get used to it. I saw shows like The Bionic 6. I, I, I saw The Bionic 6, and if you've never seen The Bionic 6, it's bonkers crazy. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. It's amazing to watch. I would play Bionic or watch Bionic 6. I would, I was in college at the time, so I've got no excuses, but then I would go to the gaming club at the school and, well, they're taking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but they're using villains of vigilantes uh, powers to enhance the game, and that didn't strike me as 
odd or bad in any way. And I could see those characters that I had on the screen, but my versions of them. And I had numbers to back that up, and text, and personality. I am not suggesting that your average gamer needs to consume nearly as much popular media as I have. Um, my fandoms are ridiculously broad. My first doctor was John Pertwee in 1974. Um, I have since gone back and caught up on Hartnell and Troughton, but I have been there all along. Uh, I haven't seen Jodie Whittaker's second episode, saw the first episode, brilliant, loved it. I was there when there were lines around the theaters for Star Wars. Uh, A New Hope, from the beginning, I have been in a theater for every single film since, whether I thought it was going to be good or not. Um, I think the prequels were an excellent life support for a 20-minute sword fight in the third movie. And that's all they were, but uh, I have followed every iteration of Star Trek. I fell off a little bit in later seasons of Voyager and Enterprise, but I've caught up. <sighs> Blake's Seven, The Avengers, the, the Arang- Avengers series from uh, England, uh, John Steed and Emma Peel as the spies in the 60s and 70s. Um, Space 1999. Battlestar Galactica, the first series, can't stand the second one, personal reasons. Hogan's Heroes, Get Smart, uh, the, the most of the television of the 60s and 70s, all in the family, part of that. There's, there's an Archie Bunker up here providing commentary every so often, and a George Jefferson. Um... I have all of this up here. Power Rangers. Power Rangers and a bunch of anime series that no one has ever heard of. Uh, Usha Raideen. Yeah, I, a lot of people heard of Get a Robo now because it had a big revival. Uh, UFO Diapolon. Um, UFO Grandizer. So much packed in that every time I turn a corner looking for on the next thing, the next inspiration, there is someone waiting for me, handing it to me in my mind. It's a little bit much sometimes. And it is the result of partially misspent youth. I could have the periodic table of elements up here. Uh, that That's one of my common uh, regrets is that I have, I can sing uh, the theme songs to most television series that were on Saturday morning and through the 1980s, I do not have the periodic table of elements up here. I could really learn it if I felt like it. That being said, everyone gets a toolbox. Everyone gets a set of things in their head that lets them put that in front of a group of gamers or that they bring into that game to fuel them. Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Doctor Who, um, the Avengers, the, the American comics or the, or the Marvel Cinematic Universe, DC. I, my brother... Uh, who was 13 years older than me, collected comic books religiously until I was about seven, and then I got his collection. Um, So I had um, the works of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko and a couple by Bob Kane. I had the classics to start from and followed a lot of those comic books up through... Eh, 2005 or so. I I was collecting Crisis on Infinite Earths, the first Crisis on Infinite Earths, when it came out. Watchmen. I have a first edition of The Killing Joke around here someplace.
this has been a retrospective of all the stuff that I've got packed into my head, but to bring it back around, you get a toolbox and you get to select what goes into it. Past a certain point, it was my decision to watch these shows, to read these comic books, to read the novels, my, my, my father's science fiction collection, top to bottom, A to Z, aspirin to Zelazny. And I packed my head with all of these characters and things and situations and actions and strategies and tactics. I bring a lot of that to dice and pen and paper. And when you have you can get by with a fairly small amount of things in your toolbox. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you have what you have. Uh, if you find a couple of the, of really good inspirations, things that grab you, things that pick you up and carry you, things that live in your head when you are not watching them. When you buy real estate in that world, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, um, Star Trek, when you buy some of that real estate and put your footprint on it and pick up some dice to make things happen or not happen in that place, uh, you've got your toolbox pretty well laid out. Mine, if you couldn't tell, isn't terribly well organized. But it's very full. Um, one of the things I do in my daily meditation of daydreaming, occasionally hourly on bad days, is take the things out of that box, set them down in front of me. Um, watch what they do. Imagine where they would be, what they would be at. What if you took the Enterprise into the world of Star Wars? What if a Star Destroyer ended up in the Federation? These are usually more complex questions than most people want to believe that they are. I've always believed that for every complicated question, there is a simple, easy to understand wrong answer. Then again, what happens if you're just a person, just someone randomly, randomly generated? Maybe your stats were rolled up on dice and you end up in one of these situations or two of them or more of them all at once what if mind flayers are having a war with Daleks that was a really really harsh mage game I should probably have toned it down a little bit every so often you gotta shake out the toolbox every so often you gotta see what's in there take take a little bit of stock as I'm doing now and run through a pile of what ifs. When you get to the table and you have dice in your hand and a situation comes up that no one has ever seen before, it can happen. It can often happen. I try to make those happen as a game master. People get in the game and it's not just you you walk into a 10 foot by 10 foot room, there is a chest in the center guided by an orc, what do you do? Um, that can be fun, but you get into a situation that you haven't ever seen before. It hasn't been on a screen, hasn't been in a movie, maybe it's a combination of things you've seen, maybe something completely new. What do you do? I flip through my internal files of all the things I have seen. How would James DeGrees handle this? How would Colonel Hogan manage this situation? What would B.A. Baracus do if he was faced with this? I have conversations between these characters, how things should be handled, what gets done, what doesn't get done, what would work, what are the outcomes, what are the consequences? And then something comes out of my mouth. I usually know what it is first, but sometimes I just let it go. And then I roll dice.
It's chaotic. It is overly complicated. It is just a ridiculous amount of memory resources allocated to this process and these things. But it makes me feel like all of that time spent in front of that Zenith 28-inch television in the family room watching Speed Racer throw people off the back of cars to break their necks on the road behind him wasn't misspent. Speed Racer murdered people a lot. It was amazing. I was four. That explains so much. Well, thank you for following me along on this chaotic rant through my own mind and memory and imagination. Um, what's in your toolbox? I want to know what you have elected to keep in your toolbox of your imagination and your gaming. Leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Feedback is feedback. Uh, tell me what's in your toolbox. Tell me what you want to have in a toolbox, or what you think belongs in the ideal toolbox for a gamer or a player or game master. Uh, leave me a comment. Uh, if stuff you want to hear me talk about, suggestions, ideas, uh, you will love leaving me a comment. I will love getting one. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, why not? My channel is awesome. Uh, hit the subscribe button below. Uh, if you'd like to see these videos as soon as they come out, hit the little notification bell so you're alerted when my videos become available. If you'd like to donate to the channel in a more substantial manner, I invite you to hit me up my Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash scottquorum, and consider donating. Absolutely anything helps and allows me to make better videos more often. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I'm Scott Quorum, this is what has mattered to me, and I will see you next time on the next Matters of Decorum.